Good morning slash afternoon slash evening whenever you are watching this um, to everybody. This video, um, we are going to uh, start talking about how to, uh, in order to set the stage for us to figure out how to work with exponents, what we are going to do is get some of our vocab together today. So in this video, we're going to talk about what a monomial is, and we're going to talk about exponents. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. So first of all, um, let's talk about monomials. All right, so a monomial is like a fancy schmancy name for a product, um, and there's a couple rules to this kind of product. So you can multiply, um, you know, quite a few things. You can multiply. Um, uh, variables with other variables and they can have exponents with them and you can multiply any kind of number with it so you could be decimals fractions integers whatever it can it can be any of that um, and and uh, but the rules are all right so some of the hard and fast rules about it is that um, the exponents have to be positive they have to be positive Right? They can't. I was about to say they have to be a non non integer, and I thought that didn't make any sense. They got to be positive. So whole numbers. So zero on up, right? Um, and the other one of the other rules about the monomial is that there can the only operation that's happening in a monomial is um, is multiplication. All right. It, it may look like division with some of them, but that's because the division is disguising itself as a fraction with a number, with something that basically would be a coefficient, right? So it's, it's a little different than when you're talking about actual real division where you're dividing a variable or something like that. So that's not, that's not what a monomial works. So if we look at the second line, the second set of lines here, it says an expression that involves division by a variable like AB divided by C is not a monomial. So um, let's just kind of look at some examples of what monomials are. And there's there's like this stuff about linear and nonlinear. The big thing is linear means your exponent's one. Anything 2x squared is nonlinear, right? So once you get anything bigger than one, then it's it behaves in different ways and just weird things happen. So it's not linear, all right? So what what do monomials look like? Well, let's look at let's look at what we got here. So on this first one, okay, I'm going to put the highlighter on. We've got um, you know negatives are cool, right? The fact that we've got this that's cool, right? This would be cool, but the problem with this is, right, is that we've got this thing going on, I and mean, that's not cool. You cannot have any kind of operation other than multiplication happening in a monomial, right? So we've got addition going on, so it's not a monomial. It's actually two separate terms is what you've got here. You've got this, which is a monomial, and then you've got five, or positive five, which is another monomial. And so you have a sum of monomials there, but it's not a monomial in and of itself. All right, if we look over at 1B here, um, 23, a, B, C, D squared, right? D is the only thing that's squared. And this is absolutely okay because this is a product. This is basically 23 times A times B times C times D times D. And we rewrite that. And we'll talk about that in a minute as D squared, right? So I think that, um, I think that when we look at this, hopefully we can see that this ticks all the boxes, right? Positive exponents. No other operations going on. This one right here, 1C, is also a monomial because even though it does look like there's division going on, this is basically a coefficient. So this is kind of the same as this. It's like 1 half times x, y, z squared, right? And so you can have any kind of number out front. So 1 half is absolutely fine. And then x, y, and z squared tick the boxes because you've got... Um, non-negative uh, non exponents going on with that. And then 1D is not a monomial, and the reason it's not a monomial 
is because it has that division thing going on with the n in the denominator there. So you're not actually dividing by another variable here, right? You're, so um, is this really super important? I'm gonna be honest with you and say um, not really. Um, most of the time we'll use the word term more than we use the word monomial, but you should kind of know what it means. And it's something I didn't say, but hopefully maybe you thought of this, is that this word root like, starts out with mono. Mono means one, right? And so that's kind of what it means. So it basically means it's, it's one term, right? It's one thing. So hopefully you can remember that. Now the last thing I want to go over in this video is, um, I thought about making this a separate video, but I don't think it needs its whole own video, is, you know, just a quick refresher on what exponents are. So the big thing with exponents is you should know that exponents are repeated multiplication. That's what it is. So if you're multiplying anything over and over, let's say you're multiplying, uh, you've got two, times four times five times two times three times six times five times four times four times six. Supposing you have something like that, right? So the way you would write this, if you don't feel like writing all this garbage out, is you could rewrite this in a much shorter kind of notation using exponents, right? So I would say, okay, well, I've got two twos, so I got two squared, right? Two and then this number, the exponent, tells you how many times you're repeatedly multiplying it, right? Um, and then the lower number, if you look at this thing up here, the lower number is your base, right? So base of two, exponent of two. I look at my threes. I got a base of three, exponent of one. And when you have an exponent of one, you don't write it down, okay? You just leave it blank. For my fours, I have, I have four, one, two, three times, so I have four to the third power. I have five, and I have five two times, and then I have six two times. So you can put like a little dot between these to kind of show that it's not like one big mushy number. But this is a kind of an extreme case of why exponents are useful. Generally speaking, it's with like one, only one thing. And then the other thing you gotta remember is that a lot of times when they give you um, a, an integer and you're finding the power of it, you, you, they want you to actually evaluate it. And to evaluate it means find the value of it, right? Tell us what it means. So if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you've got four to the third, what is this? You should, you know, you should, don't just leave it like that. You should be like, well, it's four times four times four, right? So we got four three times, right? One, two, three times. That's where that third comes from. And then you just multiply it. Four times four is 16, and 16 times four is 64. And what I'm telling my classes is um, the one thing I would highly recommend is I would highly recommend memorizing as many powers of two as you can. So like, you know, knowing two to the one is two, two to the two is four, two to the three is eight, and so on, go going up probably to like maybe eight, eight, even 10. Um, the reason I say this is because you'd be surprised how many times you run into situations that use powers of two, and I'm not, and the, the obvious one is computer applications, but there's, there's other ones too. So it's definitely a good idea to, to you know, as you work through this, you know, try to commit some of, some of these to memory just because of the frequency that you're going to see them. You're going to see them quite a bit, so it's a good idea. All right, so this is this meandering weird video. We're all done with this. Um, next video, we are going to start diving into some of the operations of working with these monomials and multiplying them and seeing what happens.